You're taking a look inside Kansas politics. Welcome in. I'm Denisha Richard. We recently talked about the Women's Bill of Rights. Now to refresh your memory, the Women's Bill of Rights, in short, it defines the term woman and defines the term man. Supporters say it will protect women's privacy in areas like sports, restrooms, locker rooms and domestic violence centers. Now things have changed since we last talked about the bill on the show, including adding in protections for individuals in Kansas who are intersex through the Americans with Disabilities Act. Earlier this month, we had a group of opponents sit down with us to talk about why they were against the bill. Well, today we will talk with those in favor of the bill. Joining me now is May Melman with the Independent Women's Voice. And if you've been following the debate on the Women's Bill of Rights, this organization has been very visible in many hearings to tell Kansans why this bill benefits women. Thank you for sitting with me today, May. Yeah, thanks for having me. And so when we talk about the Women's Bill of Rights, this has been termed as a victory for the women here in the state of Kansas. Yeah, and you know, I ask, who in the state of Kansas? The women. That's why uh, we're here to define who a woman is so we know who to support. You can't promote people, you can't celebrate people if you don't know who they are. So what this bill does is it provides the definition of a woman and um, for me, there are two really important aspects of the women's rights movement that I think that this bill will really help. So one is our teenage girls. Teenage girls are not doing okay right now. 60% of them say that they are persistently depressed. That's double the amount as men. 13% have tried to commit suicide. This is a horrible crisis and you can't help girls if you can't define who they are. For me, sports is a huge help. Sports is correlated with higher grades, higher self-esteem, less teenage pregnancy. And, um, and so we really want to protect the ability of girls to participate in sports. Another thing, protecting our most vulnerable women, and that is women who are victims of uh, domestic abuse. It is an unfortunate reality when you have a stronger sex and a physically weaker sex together, you're going to have domestic violence. It is against the law. Those women need a place to go. There was a shelter in Alaska where uh, the shelter was forced to basically go co-ed mm -hmm. and the shelter sued and said that they didn't want to do that. Their women in Alaska said, I would rather sleep outside in the cold in sub-zero temperatures than go be in a shelter that has men in it. Okay, and translating that here to the state of Kansas, that would protect women from that against that happening. At least if you had something called a woman's shelter, that women would know that that's a woman's shelter, that there are only gonna be biological women there. Of course, if Kansas wanted to have co-ed shelters in any way, to have women's shelters and men who identify as women, absolutely Kansas could still do that. But a woman would know that if she went to a woman's shelter, that that's what she would be getting. Okay, so we talk about the definition of woman. This bill has been called by opponents anti-trans. Let's take a look at what Representative Lindsey Vaughn recently had to say about the Women's Bill of Rights. It does nothing to protect women's rights, but instead weaponizes the rhetoric of rights to erase protections for trans and non-binary people. When she says the word weaponize, what are your thoughts on that? So I completely disagree that by defining terms that you are being anti-trans. Um, in fact, trans people themselves use terms like male to female and female to male when they talk about transition. Those terms have meaning um, and all this would do is codify that meaning. Uh, that said, you know, uh, I think that Kansas legislators do need to and probably will have conversations about how to balance women's fairness, privacy interests, safety with values like inclusivity. Those are tough questions. I can't sit here and answer them today, but I do know that having eligibility requirements is not anti-trans, anti-male, or anti-anything else. You could take the top women's basketball star and put her against anybody on the bench at KU or K-State and the man would win. So you want to protect the integrity of women's sports, uh, not because I hate Grady Dick or anybody on the K-State 
basketball team, but because I understand basic notions of fairness. So I think it is a really unfair attack to say that this has something to do with hate when it really has to do with common sense fairness. We're talking more about the Women's Bill of Rights. We'll be right back. Growing up at a &H Farm is always an adventure. You'll just never know what you'll see. No kidding. Easter at a &H Farm is extra special in Manhattan, Kansas. Pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni. Here's your pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni. Sorry, when you say pepperoni, 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 are you saying the ingredients or the name of the pizza? Yes. There's three kinds of pepperoni. So he got the pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni pizza, and they're making more of the pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni pizza, and that does come with the three kinds of pepperoni, which is why they call it the pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni pizza. But do I want the pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni pizza? I do want a pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni pizza. Can I get the pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni pizza with deli style traditional crispy cupping pepperoni? It's the perfect amount of a lot of pepperoni. Order from the Casey's app for limited time only. Well, what are you supposed to do if you're in a hot tub and a mountain lion comes up? We stand up, we say things like, get out of here, mountain lion! You mountain lion. lion! Next Live, Lorraine Rocco and Jeremy Jordan. Monday at 11 on 27 KSNT. K-State, KU, all sports. Join us every Sunday night right after 27 News at 10. As we bring you another exciting week of K-Nation. Sponsored by K-State Superstore and 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Your vacation calls. Visit the beach at the Stormont Vale Event Center with the Topeka Tropics. Hard-hitting, high-scoring football your family is sure to enjoy. Get your tickets now at Ticketmaster.com or in person at the Sky Zone box office. Let's get tropical, Topeka. I'm proud to have served my country and would like to help my fellow veterans receive the recognition they deserve. If you know a veteran you would like to see honored, nominate them for Veteran Salute at KSNT.com. Veteran Salute, sponsored by Devon James Injury Lawyers. TDC Learning Centers began as Topeka Daycare in the 1960s, and we provided quality care to thousands of families. Today, there are numerous locations where we teach and nurture kids from infant through pre-K. Get info about programs and enrollment at learnplaygrow.org. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. We are talking about the Women's Bill of Rights today. We are here with a proponent of the bill, May Mailman with Independent Women's Voice. Now, May, we, before we went to break, we talked about that we would bring up sex versus gender. That has been a large debate within this conversation for the Women's Bill of Rights. People say that it's used interchangeably, but it is different. Exactly. So I think some people use them interchangeably because they don't like saying the word sex because it also means intercourse. So in our society, we've kind of used them, you know, everybody has a gender reveal party. Well, you know, that means a sex reveal party. Sex is biological and it is binary. There is male and there is female. That's what this bill discusses is just sex. Gender, you know, originally had to do with more your role in society, gender roles, women should be this, men should be this, and gender stereotypes, that type of thing. And so because there's a subjective feeling and cultural element to that, you know, gender has be become how you identify how you see yourself. I don't, you know, profess to be the leading expert on all things gender, but this bill does not touch gender. There is no difference in the way that anyone can identify, should identify. This bill only addresses sex as binary. Okay, well, I want to expand a little bit on that. In February, the ACLU, they called the definition of sex and families, quote, outdated and inaccurate. And then to make it a little more complex, um, a Pew Research Center poll that was conducted last year, it says that half of the young adults that were polled under the age of 30, they said that they believe that gender is assigned by sex at birth, now that's actually compared to 60% of those who are a little bit older, age 30 through 49, who say that gender is assigned at birth. And then 64% of those that are 65 and older who say the same thing. So when the ACLU says that it is outdated, when you look at these figures here, the younger Americans get the more their views are changing on what sex and gender really means. Right, so I think that that actually really highlights the need for this bill. It's kind of confusing. How could we need to define man and woman? I mean, like, like I said, everybody, when you go to a gender reveal party or when you ask 
the sex of your child, they sort of know what we're talking about. So in common sense, we all know that there are two sexes, and yet we you know, answer surveys in this sort of confused way. So I think that, you know, for some criticism that why are you doing this, why is this necessary, it is for these survey results because people do sometimes get confused when you say woman, when you say woman's locker room, what am I going to expect there? And if this bill, pa well, this bill has passed, so when it uh, reaches the governor's desk, yeah, yeah. And, and hopefully becomes law, you'll at least know what a woman's space means. Do you have to have a woman's space? No, you can absolutely have a you know, co-ed or women plus whoever, but it will give uh, meaning to some of these terms that have lost meaning over the years. So while this conversation has continued throughout the debate of the Women's Bill of Rights, there has been what you call misconceptions about the bill, that it codifies, it changes the law. Tell me more about what more, what misconceptions you have heard when you're hearing more about what people are saying about the Women's Bill of Rights. Yeah, so I think uh, I want to address two of them. So the first is that this is some sort of conservative or right-wing thing, when actually the model legislation that this bill is based off of was from across the p political spectrum. So you have uh, very left-leaning, very pro-choice women who want to preserve the dignity of lesbians and bisexuals. You have very conservative people who very much want uh, God's creations to be loved for who they are. So you've got the full spectrum really uh, coming together to say we need to define and protect womanhood. I think the other thing is that this is somehow harmful um, and exclusive of trans people. And I really disagree with that. Trans people, just like any Kansan, just like any person, has rights, has dignity, and is deserving of respect. These definitions just give people notice about what we're talking about. But there is no room for discrimination anywhere in Kansas, and proponents of this bill very much know that and agree with that. And with this bill, in the earlier stages, of course, as you talked about, basically this is a bipartisan, there's Democrats who agree and there's Republicans who agree that there should be a Women's Bill of Rights. So it's kind of crossing party lines at this time. At the beginning stages of the bill, there were some Democrats who said that this bill has nothing to do with women's rights, that it only excludes trans women, that if we're talking about women's rights, that's getting equal pay or better access to child care centers. Do you agree with those words? Well, how can you even talk about women's rights if you don't know what women are? So let's take equal pay. So equal pay is actually already mandated uh, by federal law, the Equal Pay Act. So when you're comparing two people's salaries, you have to know whether one is a woman and whether one is a man. And so what this would do is it would actually make statistics real, statistics relevant, so that you can protect women. We're going to talk more about this bill when we come back. I want to ask you about Governor Laura Kelly and her response to the Women's Bill of Rights. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. We'll be right back. I only paid $37 for my glasses. Awesome. Success vision. It's the real deal. It couldn't be easier. The eye doctor next door is great. Two thumbs up? Yes. <laughs> my glasses feel great. So easy. I couldn't be happier. Now that is awesome. I loved it. It's actually fun to buy glasses. Great feel and great look. That's why I keep coming back. I will definitely be back. To bed for 39 in an hour for less. Come see us today, Success Vision Express. Car accident? Devon James wins. The real beauty of Kansas lies in the strength of its people. Hardworking, determined, resilient. But sometimes, even the best of us can use a little help. As attorneys, we have the privilege of being your advocate when you need help the most. Because what matters to you matters to us. And that's why if you've been injured, Devon James wins. Anywhere in the state, dial 8. Call 888-8888. State coordinates of new land acquisition. Oh, you know that big oak tree that got struck by lightning? Negative. The barn with the funny cow mural? Negative. One-eyed scarecrow? Negative. Giant water tower? You're not from here, are you? I've never seen him. 
Robots don't know you. We do. Hey, how's your dad doing? For over 80 years, we've built relationships first and plans second. It's your future. Let's protect it. Contact Farm Bureau agent Kirk Bath in Osage City at 785-528-4112. Have a cute kid? Sign up today at ksnt.com and we may feature them in the news. Featured kids will receive an achievement award from Bonkers. Watch 27 News weekday mornings to see if we feature your kid. Cute Kid of the Day is sponsored by Bonkers. This week's Morning Coffee Club prize is a rain gauge, sponsored by Kansas 811. Sign up at ksnt.com for your chance to win. Then watch 27 News weekday mornings from 5 to 7 to see if you've won. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Denisha Richard. Joining me in today's show is Mae Melman with the Independent Women's Voice. We have been talking about the Women's Bill of Rights. It has started a huge debate here in the state of Kansas, and it's on its way, possibly on its way soon, to the governor's desk. Now, as we talk about the governor, the governor has already vetoed several bills that have been deemed as anti-trans. And they are expecting her to veto this bill as well. She has said that she wants to veto bills that have been described as anti-trans. What are your thoughts on Governor Kelly making this bill go away? Well, it's inconceivable to me that a governor would take such a politically unpopular position. 80% of Kansans say that it is important to define basic terms like male, female, uh, woman, man, boy, girl. And 86% say that women's only or single sex spaces are appropriate sometimes. Um, also, since all this does is give definitions, it gives Kansans knowledge about what's going on and it's good for the democratic process. So instead of a random judge or a random bureaucrat messing with language, this is the language and then people can debate what should be the case. Other governors who have done, uh, you know, who have also uh, sort of vetoed women's sports bills and things like that, there has been information that they get a lot of money from the pharmaceutical lobby. The pharmaceutical lobby has a lot of money in obviously uh, transgender treatments. So I would be curious if Laura Kelly continues down this road, whether she has Kansan's interests at heart or whether she's getting paid off by somebody else. Well, you talk about, I know you, you say this about the governor, but you also mentioned that uh, an astounding amount of Kansans want a definition of man and woman. But do they really care? You know, right now when we talk about transgender women or girls that are in sports right now, there's about a handful of them. Uh, when we talk about the, the detention centers, there hasn't really been many women, trans women, who were transferred over to those detention centers. Is this really a problem at this time that we need to worry about? So, a, yes it is, for sure. So there are already 78 prisoners who identify as something other than their biological sex. So, you know, this is something that, and that's double what it was two years ago. So this is something that is very much increasing. But even if not, even if this was something that was just barely on the radar because we're seeing it in other states, other states are having competition issues in sports, those types of things, why would we wait? for someone to themselves have their privacy stripped of them. Why would we wait? So instead, let's define what we're talking about and then let's have the conversation about where there should be women's spaces and where there shouldn't because this is still going to take a little bit of time. The exclusion or the proposed exclusion of transgender girls and women in these facilities, they say that this is going to cause a huge problem in the trans community and that it could hurt the entire Kansas community overall. And when we talk about, you know, whether or not it's an issue, we talk about whether the definition of a man or a woman, what that means versus sex versus gender. At the end of the day, the pro opponents of the bill, they say that trans women are women. That's what they believe. Trans women are women. So based on all of your statements on today, do you not agree with that statement that trans women are women? 
So it's hard for me to even respond to that if there is no definition of woman, right? So a trans woman is a what? So we are saying that there is such a thing as biological sex. That is how we are going to define womanhood. That is not meant to be trans exclusive in any way. I believe that every human is beautiful, is deserving of respect, and everybody has their own thing going on, has their own cross to bear, and I completely acknowledge that. That said, we have to have language. I mean, there's an entire book written about this. It's called 1984, where they change the language because they want to change the truth. They want to change what you know. We have to say no. We know that two plus two equals four. We know that there are two sexes. What we want to do with that knowledge to create a fair and, uh, you know, inclusive environment is up to us, but let's not, let's not abuse language to get there. And I want to kind of circle back a little bit. We talked about um, where women would be protected in these facilities. Uh, we've had bathrooms, we've got locker rooms, and also the rape crisis center. Uh, so that's something that opponents of the bill have really expanded on, on domestic shelters and rape, rape crisis center, places that can keep women and trans women safe. And with this bill, it would exclude them from those spaces. Do you not believe that they have a right to have access to somewhere like a rape crisis center? Where would they go? So, you know, as I, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but this just uh, is a definition provision. So it doesn't say you can go here, you can't go here. That said, if you hang up a sign that says this is a women's thing, then that means women. Does that mean that men should have nowhere to go, uh, whether biological men, people who identify as men, people who identify as you know something else? No, there there should be safe spaces for all Kansans, uh, just like domestic violence should be illegal, no matter you know who the perpetrator is. There should be safe spaces. All this is is that as a woman, don't I have a right to know? whether I'm going to see a penis when I walk into a rape center because that would be traumatizing and I have the right to know what I'm walking into. All right, so if people want to get more involved in making sure that this b bill becomes law, how can they do that? So first of all, definitely call your senator and your representative, although this already passed both chambers, if Laura Kelly vetoes it, it will be back. So they really need to hear from people. And then also, Independent Women's Voice, IWV.org. We have the whole Women's Bill of Rights, all other things that are going on in other states too. Check it out. All right, well, thank you so much, Mae Mailman, for joining us today from the Independent Women's Voice. Now, the Women's Bill of Rights, it will head back to the Senate to approve of the changes before it can head over to the governor's desk. If you want to see the previous episode that highlights the opponents of the bill, you can find that on YouTube. We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. K-State, KU, all sports. Join us every Sunday night right after 27 News at 10. As we bring you another exciting week of K-Nation. Sponsored by K-State Superstore and 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Want to be floored with a special deal? Check out the floor project. It's our inflation-fighting flooring sale. Before giant nationwide price increases, we bought truckloads of name brand luxury vinyl, carpet, wood, and ceramic tile. That means savings on top of savings, up to 60% on our hottest in-stock floors anywhere. Discounts on all labor and free financing for 12 months too. Save money, no worries. That's what the floor project is all about. Hi, Clay Sherwood, Swims and Sweeps. I'm here with Frank and Dean, the CEOs of Q, and we're here to show you our wall of fire. We have hearthstone, wood-burning stoves and fireplaces. Frank and Dean just can't get enough of the hearthstone stoves. We have electric fireplaces, a variety of gas-burning fireplaces, both vented and non-vented. We also clean chimneys. So let Swims and Sweeps keep you warm this winter. Play the 27 KSNT Basketball Challenge. Sign up for your chance to win a 65-inch 4K Smart TV and pizza for an entire year. Join now at KSNT.com. Sponsored by Kansas 811 and these fine sponsors. 
If you've been waiting to find out if siding is affordable for you, don't wait any longer. It's our seams on the back of the house sale. Click or call now. Have a cute kid? Sign up today at ksnt.com and we may feature them in the news. Featured kids will receive an achievement award from Bonkers. Watch 27 News weekday mornings to see if we feature your kid. Cute Kid of the Day is sponsored by Bonkers. Sign up for your chance to win weekly prizes at ksnt.com. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Denisha Richard. Joining me now is Rebecca Chung, and she is not joining us as a guest today. She is now joining us as our new host. If you haven't already heard, this will be my last show with Inside Kansas Politics, but we are sending it over to someone who is more than capable of taking over this show. Rebecca has worked with the Capitol Bureau. You've been there for about a little over a year now, and you have been working so hard at the Capitol Bureau, and now you'll be able to bring that expertise over here to the show. Yes, a little over two years. It's felt longer, <laughs> I would say. Um, but two I'm years, really, okay. yeah, <laughs> really excited to join Inside Kansas Politics and to uh, guide people around the Capitol and what exactly is going on. It's a lot of stuff moving forward, hard to keep up, but shows like this is something that helps. That's say. right. That's right. Yeah. It's something that helps and it's something that the Kansas people need and you will be here to fulfill that need. And so you might have noticed these two flags on the table on every show. This is almost like the Inside Kansas Politics torch, our flags here. So we are passing the torch, aka the flags, passing it over to Rebecca Chung now. Thank there you. you. Go. I I accept this honor. <laughs> <laughs> and we are very honored to have you on the show now as the new host. So please welcome Rebecca Chung as our new host. And as her official hosting gig to start it off, we're going to have her close out the show. Okay, Ooh, Rebecca, you exciting. ready? Yes, let's All do right, this. All right, there you go. And that was your look inside Kansas politics. If you want to keep up to date on all things Kansas politics, then follow us on social media. Follow us on Twitter at In Kansas Politics. We'll also post the full video on YouTube. Just search KSNT News and check KSNT.com slash inside dash Kansas dash politics for past episodes. If you have a story you want Kansas state legislators to hear, let us know. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. Yay.